Hello, my peoples. This is Doug. In this video, I want to talk to you about adding retail variables and events to launch rules. So here we are in our SDR, and we want to be able to create rules that run when we are on a product view page, or when we add something to a cart, when we check out, and when we order. Now we've created some data elements here. We are looking at this product event element in our data layer. And let's take a look at that. In fact, if we go to our site here and we go to men's fine apparel, for example, and we decide that we need a tuxedo really bad, then we click on that. And this is a product view page, right? So when we view this page and I just look at the source, our data layer has a product section and we've got this product event equals product view. So we want to run a rule in launch whenever product event equals product view. And we want to capture that event in our events variable. And we want to capture the product ID in the product string. Now we could use a product name, but it's best practice really to use something that's not going to change. And it's very common to use like a SKU because at some point if they decide to change this to, you know, black tuxedo, then that would be a whole new product, whereas the product ID would not change. And later on, we can actually create a classification report for the friendly name anyway, so that we can look at the nice to look at names in our product classification report. Anyway, so we're good there. So we're going to use a product ID and we're going to use this product event. Now let's jump over to launch and we're in our rules section here. And we already created here a special page load rule for our search results. And this is gonna be very similar because we are going to create a rule to only run when there's a product view. In fact, if we go back to our SDR, we're gonna to have to have a rule for each one of these because we wanna run one rule when it's a product view, second one when you add a cart, one for checkouts, one for orders, right? So we're going to add those later, but let's start with product view. Now this is going to be a very special one because we're going to actually use a different extension or an additional extension. So if I click over to the extensions, you can see that I've actually added this product string extension as well. If I go to the catalog, actually, let me show you this, start typing in like prod. You'll see that there are actually three extensions, one by search discovery, one by Blast Analytics and Marketing, one by Adobe Consulting Services that work with the analytics product string. So you're welcome to go through these, try any of them, all of them. Uh, by the time you listen to this, there might be more. So use whatever you want. I'm going to show you the one for the analytics product string on this one. So I've already installed that. I can click configure. And you can see that there's really nothing to configure here, but it does give you some instructions. And we're going to want to know this. To use this extension, simply add the Adobe Analytics product string, set s.products action to your rule. So we're going to set this action when we want to run this. And we must accompany that with an analytics set variables action that also sets a corresponding success event, in this case, product view. And this has to happen before you send the beacon, okay? So remember those three things. We're gonna use this extension, we're gonna use the analytics extension, and we're gonna do it all before we send the beacon. So I've already installed that, so I can just hit cancel. But you'll go ahead and install that one. Now we go to rules to create this special rule. So I'm going to run this one also on DOM ready 50 so that it runs before the default page load rule, which is running at 60. And so as long as we have a number that's lower than that, it'll run before it. And we'll just use 50. That's fine. That's a default because we just need to run it before this one. This one has the beacon and we're going to set stuff just like we did here on a search. We're going to set stuff if it's a product view page and then let this send in the beacon. So add a new rule. We will call it product view DOM ready 50. Go to events. We want DOM ready all the way at the bottom there. 50 is great. Keep changes. Okay, now our condition. Conditions are if, in fact, that 
going back to our source there, if product event equals product view. In fact, I'm going to copy that right there and go back into launch. And in this condition configuration, regular, so run this when, you know, this happens. And that is when there is a value comparison. It's right near the top. And when the product event, yeah, product event, select it, equals, and I'll just paste that in, product view. And I'm even going to put case insensitive there just in case one of the pages has it set like product view lowercase or something. So as long as a product event is set to product view, we want this to run. Great. Keep changes. Now we do the rest of the stuff that is said in that extension. So we add an action. This is going to use that product string to help build it. Now it wants to know what is our action type. So we're going to set s.products, as it said, and select our event. In this case, we're going to do a prod view. That's our event. It needs to know that so it knows how to create the product string out of the stuff that we have down here. So we just need to put in our data element for the product ID or name. Click on that. And again, we're going to use our product ID. And we are good to go there. That was step one, keep the changes. It said we need to follow that, click on the plus, with an analytics set variables where we set the event. So we go down to the events and set prod view. That's it. Okay. So we can even go in here if we wanted to and say set prod view event. And we'll see that that is there. We've set the product string. We set the prod view event. And then we don't set the beacon because that actually happens in the other rule. So that's it. Now we just save that to library and build. And that's done. And it was successful. We're good. So now we can go check it out. So let's go to our site. And we can go back to the homepage here if we want to. And let's go ahead and open our debugger, clear all our requests. And if we run that home page, let's actually move that to the left so we can see it. So on the home page, of course, still evar1, still our page name, and our event is event1, normal stuff, okay, page level stuff. But we go into fine apparel, we need that tux, and we have over here a hit for the page that was the men's section. And then now we have our hit for this page, and it is a page view or a prod view. So now, in addition to evar1 and 2 and stuff like that, we have our prod view event, along with event 1, of course, and we have our product string. So now we have those. They were built out by our product string extension along with the analytics extension. And now we can do that on any of those pages where we have a prod view. So if we go to the women's section, maybe active wear, and we look at this tie waist puffer jacket, we can also go back over here and go to the end. And we have our prod view event. We've got our products, etc. Here's our product. ID 100240, 100240. So it has created that product string for us, and we're good to go. Now, the truth of the matter is you would do this exact same thing for the other non-purchase product events. So if I go back to the SDR, you do the exact same thing for cart ad and for checkout. So you need to see in this case what is in that product event and Make sure that you push it into that rule to run only when that page is there. Now, on your site, some of these things could be different, but let's just talk about what you have to do. So first, you have to determine that one of these things happened. So for a product view page, for example, how can you determine that it's a product view page? Mine was in the data layer. 
Yours might be simply by looking at another variable on your page to see if it's populated. So again, use that criteria in the rule to run it, and then you just need to set those values into the product string and into the events. So the product string, I recommend, again, using that product string extension, or at least one of them, and then the product event, in that case, is a prod view, and you'll just need to set those. So again, same exact thing on cart view or cart edition. You'll just need to know when did they add something to the cart. Okay, run that stuff. Okay, when did they do a checkout? Okay, run that same stuff. And then we will, in another video, since this one's getting a little bit long, we will do the orders, which is a little bit special because it adds a little bit more information. So we'll get to that in another video.